today we're making cottage core woodland DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIY. Okay, we're going to use these mushrooms that I got during the fall from Dollar Tree. This is a thrifted basket, a little block, some more of that greenery we just used, some foam, and a little scrap of that moss. We got some wax here as well. Now I want this basket to stand on its own. So I'm just gonna go right to the base of the basket and put this block here so that it kind of sits slightly at an angle. And this will do it. Now we're gonna measure and cut down a piece of foam. Because this bowl, this, well, this basket, it has graduated edges, I'm gonna make it a little more narrow in the back and a little wider in the front for the base of where we're gonna put our mushrooms. Then I'm gonna measure my grass. I'm gonna put my, well, it's moss. I'm gonna put the moss down. I keep calling it grass. And then I'm going to glue that down, which I should have done in the first place, but I got carried away. You know how it is sometimes when an idea hits you and you're just going with the flow. Well, I just kind of went with the flow. All right, so now that's glued down. We're gonna glue along here because I don't wanna see any of that foam. I want this to be right to the edge of our little basket. Trim off the excess. Now we're gonna color our mushrooms. So you can color these any way you want, but a very common mushroom is a mushroom that has a brown cap on the top and a kind of a cream colored stem. And so the bottom of it is already done. That's the way it is when they put it in the bag. Then I'm just gonna color the top. And to me, that looks perfectly like a natural mushroom. Little hot glue, and then place these wherever you like. Um, in my experience, from what I've seen, mushrooms grow in groups. They grow in clusters. So I'm going to cluster mine on one side of this basket. I got the first two down. And I colored four, but I'm not gonna use the fourth one. I'm just gonna use three. And since there's a slant right here, I'm gonna put him off to a slant just a little bit. Gives a little interest. Isn't this cute? It's cute just like it is so far. But following the same technique that I used with our little birdhouse, I'm gonna add a little bit of greenery to the outside of this. All of this really, it's eye-catching, it's interesting, you know, it gives your eye something to move around and over, and I think it's just so adorable. These picks from Dollar Tree, fantastic. Love them, recommend them. They have so many different styles of greenery just on that one pick. You can pull it apart and use it on several different projects. For $1.25, you really can't beat that. I love this dusty. Okay, so I got this piece of wood out of our yard after we had a tornado. It's beautiful. I love the characteristics of it. It fell out of one of our trees and I just brought it in the house and set it aside and let it completely dry out. I love this. So I'm just going to take a brush, just a soft brush. I'm going to go all the way over it and make sure that I get off any loose sand or dirt or particles or anything that are in there. Um, this has been in the house for quite some time. It was on the porch first. There are no bugs, so y'all don't worry. I don't bring any mites in the house or anything. In order to use this, I've got to have a way to stand it up. And I'm going to use just a piece of this wood that I have out of a, a little bag that I got at Dollar Tree. And I craft with them quite often. But this is better than a block because it kind of matches what we have going on here. So I'm just going to add some hot glue and some wood glue hold these together and then i'm going to put them in front of a fan and let them dry overnight now it's nice and clean and it will stand up just like this and this is how i want it i want this to look like sort of like a little wrap around cave type you know like there's Okay, I gotta just be honest with you. When I was a kid, I believed in fairies. And to me, 
what a beautiful little fairy garden what a little hidden area for some wildlife right or some mystical creatures some cryptids or something like that okay so this is where I was going with this take a piece of foam just chop it down just uh, what I'm doing is just using my my metal ruler here to just kind of shave off the edges shave off the bottom till I get the shape that I want that will fit on that piece that's on the bottom so the underneath side of this little block um, section of wood that I have here I'm gonna add some hot glue to it quite a bit because I don't want this coming off I'm gonna be adding some things to it and I don't want it to fall to pieces I'm gonna add it back down there on that area where I wanted it and yeah there's still gonna be some flake in here and there but this is a, a real piece of wood it's not plastic or anything so that happens in in nature all right and then once it is dry you can see how it looks I'm going to take some clear school glue and a foam brush put it all over the top of that foam and then I'm gonna grab some floral moss from Dollar Tree this is not reindeer moss this is floral moss and it is in individual pieces it looks like a sheet of it almost when you see it in the bag but absolutely not these are individual little fibers and it is very messy so cover your surface and be prepared to have some cleanup but it's so worth it I needed it in here we have live oak trees in our yard and I'm telling you that moss grows underneath them in the shade and it is absolutely beautiful all right so I'm just going to continue to add glue and moss as I need it on this piece you're going to get this on your fingers it's quite a mess all right so you can see here there's a little area here I'm sorry my camera is trying to focus on what's in front but I'm just going to add some more clear glue back there in that little nook and then tuck in a little more of that green moss so you see where we're going here you can see the idea of what we're doing here now you can get a log out of the yard and do this you can go for a walk in nature and find something that you like you could use a piece of driftwood look at these beautiful mushrooms these are foam they came on a garland that I got at Goodwill I have never seen them I don't know what store they come from so I can't help you with that but I can tell you that there are foam mushrooms if you can find them at Dollar Tree that's what I was looking for for y'all but I found these and these are even better so you can very easily put a stick or a piece of wire into the bottom and use that to put it down on your projects you don't want to be trying to hot glue them because they're top heavy and it's gonna make a mess it's they're just gonna fall over and you're gonna be frustrated it would probably even melt so starting at the top back I'm gonna add my tallest mushroom and then I'm gonna choose because I have a box of mushrooms with a bunch of different shapes they're the same colored the same color but some are flat on top some are curved some look like a hamburger bun some look like a little dome and I want to use a variety of them you don't you can see mushrooms individually certainly but most of the time you know mushrooms are gonna go grow in groups or in little clusters little fairy circles so that's what I'm doing here I'm just trying to put them where they look like they're coming out of one localized area and then I picked this one it's a little bit different looks like it has little splits in the top to go right there so it's kind of a little step down you know process there are a bunch of different heights and they're really really oh they're just beautiful y'all I have a little bag of leaves and I don't know where I got these from uh, you can get stuff like this at Dollar Tree though I cannot remember where I got them from I've had them for a long time I collect fall items and Halloween you should see my basement okay so now I'm just going to start adding down colors that I think are really pretty that would coordinate I'm using oak leaves here because this is likely a piece of oak um, that I am using that's the kind of trees we have that's where it fell so I assume that that's probably what it is it might not be it could be pecan for all I know but we're gonna pretend like it's oak and then I'm just gonna put different colors of the leaves together in little clusters you know as they would be as they fell from a tree I have some gorgeous eucalyptus from Dollar Tree I'm just gonna cut the little thick part off so it will fit and I'm just working in the little nooks and crannies again in the um, in this log or this piece of wood that's how things would grow and uh, obviously the leaves are not growing but this is how they would fall they would fall into little spaces and 
I like the natural look of that. I'm telling you, if you're new to my channel, rustic is my jam. I love rustic. I love woodland and rustic and nature and mystical things and oh, I just love it all. So I'm going to continue along and I'm just going to put these pieces down here and there. Use whatever you have. If I had some of the fall looking ferns, I would have used those here as well, but I don't currently have anything like that. So that's why I didn't use it, but it would be beautiful in your project if you want to use it. So you can kind of see where we're going here on the project. I like that there's a space and it kind of branches out away from the rest of it and it has its own little area. I think that's cute. I went and found some of these little foam acorns. They, um, I believe, came from the thrift store. And I'm just going to add those here and there because that's another thing. You know, acorns do fall not far from the tree. So we'll let those, we'll just say they fell down in there too. And I actually did lose one and it's going to roll out. Oh, there it is. And then we're going to put some on the top. I'm so sa glad that I saved this piece of wood because there's so much character in it. It's so beautiful. Am I the only one? Are you looking at this and going, what in the world is this woman talking about? Or are you thinking, this is just, my little heart is happy right now. Like the cottage core little heart is just so joyful right now. Y'all could get your little, your little fairy garden stuff and poke it in here. You could get you some of those little Dollar Tree fairies or gnomes and you could place those down in here too. How cool would that be to do with your kids or your grandkids? There's something so sweet and innocent and mystical about that to me. And this just looks like the perfect little place. The perfect little place to hide away. So I'm even going to go on the back here. There's some holes. You could put a leaf in there. You could put a branch in there. You could, you know, put some of this eucalyptus in there. Whatever you want to do. But there was a little, little crack in the back and I thought, you know, that would be cute. Let's put it there. Do you like this? I'm really loving this. Okay, so now we're going to use string lights. Check your string lights before you put them on your projects so you don't get frustrated once you've either glued it down or taped it in place. Check your lights first. And you can get string lights at Dollar Tree. Pretty sure that's where this string came from. You can get it on copper or silver, I do believe. Mine just happened to be on silver. Okay, so you're just going to tuck these around in the back and around... The foliage that's in there, you can go in between your mushrooms if you would like to. You can go underneath the leaves, which is what you're going to see me do. And I'm not actually gluing my lights down, but I'm going to take a little bit of glue to glue the leaf down so that it will help hold my wire in place. And that's easy to do. I don't want to glue too much of my greenery down other than one section of it because I want it to look like it has some movement and it has some life in it. You know, when a leaf falls, it's kind of curly. Maybe some's on the ground and some's kind of curled up in the air. I like that. I want to leave that character there. I want to try to make this look, you know, as it might would look in nature, you know, minus the string lights running through it. But we're, we're, we're making this magical and mystical, so we need some of those fairy lights. Yes. I'm going to show you two ways. So this is the first way you can wrap it. Just kind of focus just around those mushrooms and just right there in that section. You can see how pretty that would be. Or since we have two, we have a long piece here and the wood is longer, you could actually extend the end of that wire outward and just kind of wrap it around so that it goes down to the bottom all the way down to the end so that you include every bit of the greenery in there. You know, you could do that if you wanted to. Very easy to tack down, not a problem. 
This is how it would look that way if you wanted to do it that way. That's also pretty. And you don't have to glue down your um, your battery pack because when you sit this down, it's going to sit behind the biggest part and you'll, you won't be able to see it. Ideally, this would be against the wall since everything pretty is on that side of it. But I decided to keep my lights centered around my, my mushrooms and so that's what you see here. That's what I have done here. We're going to start out with some mushroom fabric from Dollar Tree. Here is that box of mushrooms I was telling you about. Got a bunch of them. And they happen to be the red that is in the fabric, so I love that. I'm going to take some Italian olive spray paint and I'm going to spray paint these two um, oval frames, not round. And it happens to match the green that is in the fabric. And I'm going to take some leaves, but not these. I'm going to use the ones I used before. I'm going to give it three coats of paint. And then once it's completely dry, this is what they'll look like. Now they're pulling a little more blue than I care for, so we're going to fix that. No worries. I'm just pointing out that we need to spray paint the inside too because you will be able to see onto the inside. You don't have to do the back part though. That's going to be glued together and you won't see it. I'm going to take my fabric and lay it down and just place the other one on top of it so I can see exactly how much I need to cut out so I don't waste any fabric. That way I still have a good piece of this fabric left if I want to create something else with it. Now you could call this cottage core or granny core, whatever you would like to call it, but I think it is very unique and different. I've never seen it done, so I wanted to share it with you. This might not be your cup of tea and that is totally fine but just get the inspiration from it. That's what I want to bring you is inspiration. So I'm going to use some hot glue and quickly work around here, pressing this fabric down to make sure that it stays in place. And as I add the glue, I'm going to pull it so that we don't have any wrinkles, but I'm not going to pull hard. I'm just going to press and pull outward slightly so that we don't have any slack in the fabric. We want it to be nice and tight. So that's what I'm doing here. I know it's hard to see because it's such a busy fabric on there. And by all means, if you don't want to use the fabric, grab some burlap. You can use some um, crafting paper. You can use some scrapbook paper here. Um, whichever way you, you know, decide that you want to do it. I'm going to continue along until I have this glued down on all the edges. And it's nice and taut so that it doesn't have any gift. That's the way it needs to be. I'm gonna take my scissors, lay them sideways. I found that using a smaller pair works easiest for me. And these are just little Arteza scissors that I love. And I'm just gonna keep going around, around and around and around and around until I trim off all the excess fabric. And then what might be left, you may have a couple of little pieces that are still there. You want to go ahead and trim those pieces off as well because you don't want those peeking out of your frame. So you can see I have little bits here and there that would go outside. Trim those off. Then I'm going to take my other frame quickly with my hot glue in just a few places so that it doesn't get cold. We want it to stick. Then I'm going to place that top one down on top of it. And then kind of slide it into place and I'm using my hands to make sure that it is pressed down exactly where it needs to be so it's mirrored to the other frame and then squeeze it together all the way around now our fabric is locked in between those two pieces I'm gonna grab my antiquing wax and a chippy brush I'm going to protect my fabric on the inside because at this point that's when I was saying no that's a little too bluish it needs to be a little darker it needs to be a little browner a little warmer so I just use a towel tuck that on the inside to protect my fabric so I don't make a mess on it and I'm just going to go around the cracks and the seams all over the front of this frame you could do the back as well if you wanted to but um, I didn't feel the need to do that. I'm going to give you an option to hang this or to stand it, so be sure that you stay tuned so you can see that. Um, but I'm not going to be seeing the back of mine, so I'm not going to bother with that. So you're going to continue around and just get it as heavy as you would like to get it. I like to start off with a light amount and then build up so that I don't get too much wax on there and waste it. So that's what you see me doing. I'm just going to 
tap out a little bit and then go back over the the little cracks in the frame or I'm, I'm saying cracks but it's actually between the elevations in the frame and then I'm also going to get on the inside and so this is where that towel comes in handy on the inside it's going to keep it nice and clean and it won't get messy and if you use a different color you don't have to worry about doing this step at all but I like the look of it I think it it really adds something to it the color is definitely different with the wax all right so now I am gonna grow some mushrooms in my frame I've already chosen three and I have one um, each one is a little different than the other and uh, size wise as well so I'm gonna start off with the tallest one and put it toward the right side then I'm gonna add the medium one in the middle and then the little baby mushroom is gonna be toward the center of the frame or the bottom of the row just like that you could add more moss in there if you wanted to but I was just done with the mess <laughs> I had already cleaned it up and did not want to get it back out so using the same leaves that we used before I'm just going to it's what I usually do is kind of give each little stack um, you know each color kind of vary the colors and I'm just gonna do that here and again I like to go off of the colors that I already have going on there this is such a busy looking background it is uh, it's it's a lot it's a lot y'all it's a lot and then I'm going to add some more over here and then you can just uh, glue each one of them I mean this is this seems like silly for me to tell you this but some people need to know you can glue them one at a time or you can glue the stack together and apply your stack whatever's easiest for you you do it that way not all of us have good dexterity some of us have carpal tunnel some of us have arthritis some of us have vision problems so whatever we can do to make it easier for one another so that we can all encourage each other to find joy in crafting is be supportive of each other so I'm trying to I'm trying to suit the taste of 16,000 people the best I can okay so rather than put a bow here which I had kind of played around with I decide why not just use a little mushroom right in the middle and I'm so glad I did it because this is just cute as it can be now I'm just gonna take that same brush I didn't add any more wax to it and just kind of go over my leaves to kind of brown them down a little bit kind of take some of that bright orange out and I think this is a cute idea y'all now it's not something that would go in my house but I think it's cute now you can stand it up by putting some blocks on the back to make it stand or you can take a little tie this is one I already had you just loop it over on itself tie a knot in the middle and then toward the middle of your frame you want to add your um, on to the next one and if mushroom doesn't say cottage core I don't know what does we're gonna do mushroom arrangement in a little picnic basket so we're gonna use some floral wire we're gonna use some thrifted greenery some wood shreds we're going to use some of these little thrifted plastic old crusty mushrooms this is a piece of foam that came off of something else that I just saved and here is a mini picnic basket it's not, not the cutest thing it came from the thrift store it's not perfect but it's perfect for me these are some vines that dried in my yard that I pulled down and clipped off I've had them for about a year and I've used them in several arrangements just gonna get the dust off of here and I'm going to wire the base 
Why are we wiring the base? Because we need something to hold our foam down. I don't want to ruin this basket. I want to have the ability to use it over again. So I'm just going to use my wires. Push up through the bottom. Give it enough space in there so that I can lay my foam down. And it will hold my foam. Just going to pull it, lay it out. Going to do the same thing for the other side. Put my foam in here. Wrap it around. You can cut your wire if you want. You can trim it down or you can just do like I did. Twist it firmly down and then press it down. It's not going to be in the way. Same thing on this side. Twisting, twisting, twisting and then laying it over. And then you can see here it is very securely in place. Alright, so now we're going to put this I can't even call it raffia. It's it's wood. It's like wood shavings. I don't know any other way to explain it. But this is going to be the base and help cover up our foam. It's going to look more natural on the bottom. I'm pushing my greenery up a tad so that I can start trimming it off. And then I'm going to go down between my branches and cut these into shorter pieces. And look at that. They look like they came that way. You can't tell. If you're careful about where you cut it, you can fix it to make it look as though it was actually meant to be two pieces. Then we're going to have to find a way to get these mushrooms to attach. So I think a pick in the bottom from another arrangement would work. Excuse my out of focusness here. We're going to do that to each one of those mushrooms and let them cool and dry. And while they're doing that, we're going to start putting down our picks in the basket. I've just went ahead and went to the corners and on the outsides to hold down this base of this um, shred that I have here. After I get those placed around, I'll start adding some mushrooms here and there. Mushrooms generally, uh, similar mushrooms can go, grow in like a fairy circle. Um, if you've ever seen those, those are really, those are really pretty and, and they really, um, I don't know, it's something to look at. It's interesting how they come up and why they come up. If you've never heard, heard of a fairy circle, you should look that up. Place those down. I've bunched those in the corner together. Like they're sitting on a, a puddle of fresh rain. And then I've put another type of pick in here. These are dried. Or they appear dry. They're not actually dried. These are also thrifted. And I've had those for years. I've used them in so many arrangements for late summer and fall. Just love them. We're going to keep pressing these down. Pull those mushrooms back up if they start looking like they're too sunken, just like we're going to do with this one that has the little green bits on it. Pull that back up just a tad. Give it some sunlight. And just keep going. Like I always say, just like I said with the other one, turn it from side to side, look at it from all angles. Make sure it's how you want it to be, how you imagine it to be. Now I'm going to go back in here with these little curly, wispy pieces and I'm going to add them here and there. I think they just kind of, they add to the whimsy. And I'm going to add in any little extra picks that I have to fill in any bare spots. Try to keep the taller ones on the top parts and the smaller ones on the, near the outside of the basket. simple enough, right? And you can get these dried vines out of your yard. You could probably buy them actually from a craft store if you wanted to. You just look for those probably in the fall and get some something similar to that. Now I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of this same wire so that I can hold the back of the basket up. I'm just going to make a little fish hook, weave it through this little section here and then twist it around. Then I'm going to push it through a section on the side and twist it around. See, I'm just kind of going through that weave, pulling it, and twisting it around the wire that's already there. That's going to give it a little hinge almost 
so that the lid doesn't fall backwards. It'll stay upright. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I had a little struggle on this side, not sure what I was doing differently, but I got it. Twist it around there. Then you're gonna, after you get that twisted securely, you're gonna just go down to the bottom, same thing, feed it through the side, and then I just wound it, the leftovers in the back underneath. If anything falls off, not a big deal, a little bit of glue, stick it back on. It's plastic, not gonna hurt anything. Look at this. Is this not perfect? Oh, this is screaming cottage core to me. 70s cottage core. It is definitely what I'm gonna call my rustic cottage core. What do you think about this? going to start off with some mushrooms. Mine are foam. I've used these in other projects. I love them. Little wood piece. That's going to be like a bottom or a base. Some little slices of wood. You can get these at Dollar Tree. A little bit of moss. And then some of this uh, ground cover moss. And it's like in a little mat or a carpet. We're going to trim this off to make it a little bit easier to manage. It fits off very easily. And then I'm just gonna hold it in place and cut around it so I have exactly the right size. So once it is trimmed up, we're gonna add some hot glue and then put this right down in place. Now I thrifted this little mat of uh, moss, so I'm not sure where it came from, but I'm I am certain any craft store has it Dollar Tree may even have it at this point Just going to press it down nice and firmly and then we're going to make a base for that just using this little piece of Wood looks like a little stump We're going to put that underneath there and that's going to be like a little riser for our project So I know that I like these three mushrooms and I want them to be together in a clump so I am going to take my hot glue and put right down in the middle and in between all the little pieces. I'll have little strings everywhere that I have to clean up. I'm gonna just hold them together tightly for a couple of minutes. You won't see how long I hold it, but give it time to dry. Then it's got a nice fat base for us to put it down on this project. If you are putting it one by one, you might want to try a different technique, but with this being so wide from the three of these, there's plenty of room for glue to hold it in place, but you're gonna have to hold it until that glue dries. Cause you see, as soon as I added glue, my little bundle tried to come apart. All right, so now I'm going to take a little bit of the Spanish moss. This just came out of my yard, but I think you can get this at Dollar Tree also, and you certainly can get it at craft stores. I'm just gonna press it down in the glue around the bottom where it's connected. This just kind of gives it like a little base. You know, if you've seen mushrooms grow in the wild, they grow out of the ground and they just push everything up around it. Almost like they're playing peekaboo. So maybe it pushed up through that moss, who knows? Now these beautiful pieces of fern, actually each little piece that sticks out looks like a fern. So I'm just going to use those to my advantage and make these look like a full grown fern in a mini version, of course. So I'll pull off each little piece and use some glue here. You might wanna use uh, some super glue or something that dries fast or use a cooler temp glue or just really be patient while each one of these pieces dries. You're gonna have to help support them just a little bit until they dry. And you can pretty much tell when the glue turns cool that the glue is dry. It's just kind of what I go by. Now ferns grow sort of from the inside outward, almost like a little explosion. 
So you'll have a clump and then they roll outward. They have little um, little strands that grow up and little curls and then they stretch out and fall to the side. So that's what I'm doing with this fern, trying to make it look as natural as it would look in the wild. And someday, if you're interested, I'll take you for a walk around my yard and in the woods and we'll look at the mushrooms that I have growing in my yard and all the little ferns and things that I have living in my yard because those things give me inspiration for my projects and I think they might give you a little inspiration too. So this is how this looks. And I think it looks really pretty. I think this would be great on a tiered tray if you're doing tiered trade. If not, just sitting in your kitchen window or on your table uh, in a curio cabinet. You could set this down in the top of a mug or a wooden cup or bowl. You could put it in your dough bowl with some pine cones and other wild pieces that you found on your own nature walk. So if you've stuck around, I'm so glad to have you here. I'm gonna use flat black paint these little lanterns from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to use one of those. I'm going to use a variety of paints, mocha parchment and red, some paint brushes, some moss. This is just a little like a crook that you can put a sign on. They came originally from Target. And some of these mushrooms from the same set as the flowers I used. And then a little miniature wreath. It's a great fine wreath. So I'm going to start by painting. We're going to take a little of that latte and parchment and we're going to mix those together. What we're going to do right now is to work on the base of those mushrooms and I want them to be sort of a creamy beige color. I want to make them solid white. I've never seen a mushroom that is solid white. It's not to say they're not out there in nature. They're just not in my yard. So I'm going to go over the bottom part, which is the underneath part of the mushroom and the stem. They have appropriate names, um, scientific names, but um, we're just going to go with the bottom of the cap and the little stem. How about that? So we'll do all those and let them dry. We're going to spray paint this. You can easily push this out. You just push on the top, turn it, and then the little light will pop out. So this will be painted completely black with the spray paint and the little loop on top also. I'm going to tear a piece of masking tape to fit over the bulb part of this light because it's going to get a spray of black paint as well and I do not want my light to be affected so we're just going to cover it up to make sure that it doesn't get any black paint on it. We want it to look like it's actually flickering. Now that the bottom has dried and our pretty little lamp or our little lantern is drying with its paint on it, we're going to add a little bit of brown to the red just so I have sort of a not so bright of a red but more of a, a richer deeper red. And I'm going to start painting the top. I want these to be similar to the other mushrooms that um, we crafted with the, the foam ones that are red with the little cream colored dots on top. I'm going to try to mimic that. So I'm just going to carefully and slowly go around the top of this and I'll do each one and I do get closer to the edge. I was just not very brave when I started. And then all of these will have a chance to dry absolutely completely before we move on with putting the dots on top. Because if you put white dots on the top of that, it is just going to bleed out and turn pink. We're going to work on the base, which is this little grapevine wreath here. And I'm just tearing up some of this moss. I think this is reindeer moss, maybe. And I'm going to start kind of gluing it down here and there on this wreath. I'm trying to find, like, if the back side's a little more flat, I try to kind of put that down in there. And I'm going to tuck it as if it is really growing in between there. We have live oak trees in our yard and there's uh, very pretty bright green moss that grows underneath the trees. It's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous when the light filters through on them. Mm. This is why I love woodland people. There's so, uh, so much magic and mystery and, and beauty in it. 
It's really beauty everywhere though. If you if you take a chance, you know, you, you take the time, I, I guess is a better word for it, to sit out and look and just not stress about other things. You just kind of keep an open mind and just feel the sun and take your shoes off and put your, your feet in the sand when it's warm outside. Just kind of connect back with with nature. It's a great feeling. It's a it's a very refreshing, connected feeling. We're all part of the circle of life, right? We can reconnect. All right, so now I'm going to take this beautiful moss-covered beauty and set it aside to work on our dots. I got it all mixed in. I don't want it to be completely mixed. I want it to, you know, possibly get a little more brown and a little more white in different sections. And I'm going to start adding the little dots with the back of my brush onto the mushroom. Rather than using a brush which could maybe splatter or fan out, if you use the end of the brush, just the plastic part, just dot it in there, then you'll get almost perfect little circles. Perfect for nature anyway. You'll do each one of these like this. You can use a pattern on each one or you can just kind of be all willy-nilly about it. Just put them wherever you want to. And I did find that if you add more paint to the brush or you keep adding it frequently, it does make it a little bit easier. Otherwise, you kind of run out of paint. They are not all the same size, that's okay. We can make them a little bit bigger, just go right over the top. So here's my crook. It was not long enough, so I'm just going to use a piece of a floral pick, and I just glued it on there and it had a little tape around it to hold it in place. And I'm gonna take some more of that same strand of uh, pitberry vine, and I'm gonna wrap the vine around here because you know, vines grow up they attach to anything they can attach to and they just wind their way up. So I thought this would be a perfect place to put a vine. And put it around this little crook. If you can't find something like this, you can make it with a piece of metal clothes hanger. You can use some type of a wire. Um, you could use a tree branch instead of this if you wanted to that has maybe a fork in the top that you could hang your lantern off of. That would be really pretty too. Now I have the additional length, and I need that so that when I hang up my lantern, it doesn't sit on the bottom. It needs to have some space. And you can see here that I am gluing it in. I'm holding it where I want it and then gluing it. I'm gonna glue it all around where the opening is that I have this stuck through. And I put it in kind of a tight spot to help hold it still. You're gonna hold it until your glue dries or you can use some clamps or something to hold it in place. And that's what I decided to do. I'm gonna get it positioned right, get these clamps on here in the right way, and give that glue a chance to sit up nice and tight because I don't want this to move when we hang our lantern off the top. Perfect. So now we can start adding in the mushrooms. Part of this is going to be a little bit fuzzy because it wants to focus on the top of the crook there rather than focusing on the bottom, but it does clear back up. So when that happens, just beware, it does clear back up. Now I'm just taking the ends of the mushrooms where they will stick down where there's enough of a gap or opening around the little pieces of twisted vine, and I'm just putting those right down in there. It's gonna help hold it in place so that it doesn't fall over and it looks like it's just bursting and growing right out of that moss, right out of that wreath. So I'll have a big one and a little one together. And then I'll do another one like that on the other side. You can see it's a little fuzzy, kind of in and out. My apologies. It's just what the camera does. Just gonna hold it, hold it in place. And one of my little flowers was falling over. Well, my, my uh, mushroom, I meant. And then I'll add another one over here. He's kind of peeking out underneath the cap. And this is how it will look. Very pretty. 
here is our black lantern and I've just turned on the lights so you can get an idea how it's going to look when it's hanging. I want to put this little sign in. There were two signs that came with it so I'm just using a stick. I'm going to glue it in, put some glue on the back of the sign and then hold that in place with a clamp so that we can move on to something else. We don't have three hands so it's good to have a clamp to help us out. I'll take some more of that moss and I'm not even gluing. I'm just tucking it in around where we push the candle back up through the bottom. And if you scratch any of your paint off when you do this, you can just take a black paint pen or a Sharpie and go over the spots where you knock the paint off. Simple, simple. We want this to look like it's been out in the woods for a while and moss will grow on just about anything in the wild. See the look of it? So I thought, yeah, let's go ahead and extend it to the top and down some of the little sides. So I'm going to start by just putting around the top little block. It's kind of in sections up there on the top, but I wanted to add just a little at a time until I had it the way I thought I would like it best. And see, so I have some going down the sides on this corner and on this corner. And that really changes the look. I think that is a really pretty look. We're going to add some more of this vine to this lantern. So I'm going to wrap it around the stick to look like it has wound its way up. And then I'm just going to wind it around two of the sections of the lantern on the outside. Not on the same piece that has the moss growing downward, but on the piece beside it. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to cover up the work I've already done. So I'm just winding this around. It just takes a minute. And I don't even have to glue it in place. But of course, if you want to, you can. Oh, so pretty. I wish I had a little fairy to put in here. It would be so gorgeous. I'm going to have to get some fairies. If y'all have fairies that you use with crafting, could y'all please tell me where you bought them? You know, if you like them, if it's a good quality, I would love to get some little fairies and some little good quality garden gnomes, other than what you see at the Dollar Tree. I mean, they'll work. If, if I need to use those, they will definitely work. But I want something that looks a little cleaner and a little more crisp. Pretty, pretty. So then, of course, let's just put a little more of those pieces of vine down here in the grapevine wreath. All you have to do is cut off a couple little sections and wrap it around your wreath. You don't have to use a small wreath, so if you don't have a tiny wreath like this, get a big one. You know, you can get a big one. Or you can wrap moss around a small round one. You know, like a, um, the foam ones, or maybe make one out of a pool noodle. And then wrap it with some moss. That would be pretty. Maybe paint it brown first. I love this. It's so cute. Ugh. So you're going to take one of these light bulb terrariums from Dollar Tree. I got mine early this summer, but they should still be there. Some pumpkin chalk paint. I'm going to use some of this. I believe this is petal blossom petal, petal blossom something spray paint. This is a little thrifted mushroom, but you can get little mushrooms at Dollar Tree. Some oak leaves from Dollar Tree. I'm not going to use the ribbon back there. And I'm going to use this rub on transfer sheet from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use a string of lights, but you'll see that later. Okay, so we're going to start by taking the lid off. Little tip for you when you are spray painting, use a bucket of rocks, a little dowel of whatever length you like, and then stick that on there. Now when you take it outside, you can get to all sides without touching it. All right, one good coat of paint. This is just going to make that chalk paint stick better to that plastic surface. So once it is completely dry, we still don't have our little screw on top. We left that off. Here's the tag for you. I'm going to start taking that chalk paint and I'm going to start putting it down on, the pump, on this pumpkin. Or, well it's not a pumpkin, it's going to be a gourd, but it's actually a light bulb at this point. I'm going to go side to side with my paint 
all the way around and up to the top just past the little area that screws on so we don't have any gaps where there's no coverage. I used two coats of paint to get the coverage that you will see here. Tried to use my little heat gun. I should have known better and I got a little dimple. You can see it underneath there. All right, I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and I'm gonna go all over here. Don't worry about the little dimple. Do not use heat on the plastic or it's gonna curl under. I knew that before I did it, but I thought if I kept my distance and kept it on low, it would be okay. Don't do that. Use a fan or just be patient. Now I'm gonna take this in the same method. I'm just going back and forth with the brush strokes. And then once it is dry, this is how it's gonna look. And to me, that looks more like a gourd. It has a little bit of a satin finish and I'm totally okay with that. See there, don't worry about that. We're gonna fix it. You know, I always fix my boo-boos because I wanna show you how to fix it in case you have a boo-boo. So this is cork lights, but you can get whatever lights you have at Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna add these little ribbons to it. These are gonna be like a leaf bottom, I guess you could say, or a mossy look, a mossy bottom maybe. I'm gonna just cut these in sections. I'm not gonna cut them completely square. And I'm gonna stack them two pieces of each color just like that and I'm going to make a little circle out of a cardboard scrap because this is going to be how we glue those pieces of ribbon down. You will burn the fire out of yourself if you put this, try to do this without using a base and I don't want that for you. I want you to be able to keep on happily crafting with no boo-boos. So you're just going to stack these on, protect your fingers and I'm just using my silicone tip finger to press it all down into the glue. Then you can just go around and trim it up if you want to. Kind of make it into a circle because it's gonna sit into the bottom and then the sides are gonna kind of fold up the bottom. It's hard to show you this because it's inside, but you'll, I think you'll get the idea. Kind of fold it and then let it just pop back out in there. You see how it goes up the sides just a little? That's the look I was going for. So now you can just go ahead and add a little bit of hot glue. You wanna use this on your cool setting. And then go ahead and put in your base. Now that's all in the bottom, so we have something to work with. Easy enough, right? Easy enough. We're gonna let that dry, and then we need to address the dent in the opening here. Doesn't this look like a gourd to you? I think it looks just like a gourd. I'm gonna take some of this trim. Now you can get these trims at Dollar Tree. They have like three on a, um, in one package and you can get them where the florals and things are uh, in my store anyway they put them all over the place maybe on an end cap i'm just going to seal the bottom by adding a little bit of glue i'm just showing you that it's on low, t low temp i don't want to melt this any further than it already has been and i'm just going to start using this my braided piece mine came from the thrift store but you use whatever you can find and you're just going to follow your curve around the opening here easy enough. I'm trying to get it as close as I can, not necessarily overlapping it, although that might have been a better idea. Um, so you do what you feel like you need to do here. And then with my thumb on the inside and my fingers on the outside, I'm just kind of squeezing that down to the, we're going to call it our gourd. Is at this point, it's a gourd. Keep going around here, adding the glue and squeezing it into place. And then when you get back to the original spot, whether you have a dent or not, go ahead and trim that off so that it meets. I'm using my bullnose pliers. I've had people asking me what tool that is. I was told these are bullnose pliers. I think I linked some in my Amazon store, so check my Amazon link and um, you might be able to find some there. If not, I'll be glad to help you try to find some. Okay, so this is about seven and a half inches, just a scrap that I had left on the paper. And I'm just gonna go with the fold here. It already looked like it had a dent there, so we're gonna make a bow just like that. Simple, simple. No tying because this is regular. I mean, you know, you know you're gonna be tying with the, the jute here, but no tying the ribbon on pawn itself. That's, I think, what I'm trying to get at because it's really thick and it would be hard to get a knot in a bow this size. So we're just gonna use our jute to do that and it's practically the same color, so, you know, it blends in nicely. 
I'm going to put a couple of knots in here so that it doesn't slip loose. And then we can just trim it off. Then you can pull the tails down and you can push those little loops right into position whichever way you want them. You can flip these up or you can flip them down and you can turn this over whichever way you want to do it. You can seal your edges. So I'm going to take my sheet here, my transfer sheet, and I'm going to choose which one of these um, beautiful embellishments I like. And I'm going to start off with these. Then I don't know what kind of leaves these are here. Are these grapevine leaves? I'm not entirely sure. And they have little berries, so I'm just going to cut them off while they're still on the backing because I, they will stick to your fingers. So and then you're going to mess your print up. So be sure that you don't touch on there unnecessarily, on the colored parts. Keep your fingers on the clear part. I'm going to hold it in place with my finger, and because this is a round, weird shape here, I'm just going to cut some notches up to the colored parts of this transfer. Just going to cut notches. That way it can lay down smoothly while I press it into place. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of options. This is my Mod Podge little squeegee, I guess you could call it. You can use something like this to press it down. You can use a popsicle stick to press it down. And in a little while, I'll be using something kind of unpredictable. But you never know what you have on hand, right? So I want to help you out so there's no excuse for not crafting. Okay. So once I get all those edges pressed down, I can carefully move my finger and the film. And there you go. And in the lighter colored leaf, there's a little crack, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. All right. So now I'm excited. I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm going to go on to my next one. And I like this one with the little pumpkins in it. And I'm going to put it on the side. So before you decide, go ahead and cut some little slits in it. And don't place it down until you are sure where you're going to put it. Because sometimes it will still stick on its own. These are really nice rub-ons, in my opinion. So this is a clothespin. You know, the type with a little round top and the little, oh, there it's completely wood. But look, you can use it and it works great because it's got a small um, surface area on the end and it really works nice to press these down. And then when you get ready to press, if you gotta press hard, put your thumb on the inside and support that under surface. Then you can flip that clothes pin around, whatever you wanna call it, and you can use the round part also. So see there? No excuses. Y'all got a craft? No excuses. So pretty. I love this particular um, sheet of rub-ons. All of the rub-ons from last year. Um, three of them. They're all gorgeous. They're really, really pretty. So you can just use whichever ones you like. So again, pressing it down. If you need to trim it or cut little pieces out of it so that it lays flat for you, go ahead and do that. And you can put your embellishments wherever you want on your gourd. I just like it kind of around the opening here. I think it's really pretty. It brings attention and, you know, everything to the front. And I like that. So now they are all stuck down there. Very pretty. We're going to work on some florals, a little floral piece here. I like the green on the flowers. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut some of those green leaves on and add them because there's some green in the other pieces of what we got going on in this gourd and I want to go ahead and let that stay there. Again, I live in southern Alabama so we have green all year round. All year round. We do have some fall colors too but you know, if we're going to be realistic, there are places in the world that still have green in the fall. So, do whatever feels right to you. I'm going to start making a little swag here. I'm just going to alternate really no particular color idea here. Um, I want it to match what's going on already with what we've already used, but no real pattern. I'm just kind of going back and forth, the bigger leaves on the bottom, the smaller ones on the top, so that you can see a representation of each color. And then on the back, I'm just going to add one more green leaf like toward the bottom. Once that glue has dried, you can take something to poke a hole right through it. You can use a hole punch, you can use whatever you have, but I'm just using one of these little wood carving tools from Dollar Tree and then just make a hole and then I'm going to feed 
my flower right through it. Now I bent the stem just like this so that it doesn't stand straight out so that it points forward. And isn't that cute? I like that. So it fits right in the hole on the top. And you can still see the gold. If you want to look at the gold, that's great. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's going to be covered on the back anyway. So now we're going to put our little bow right here in the front, on the side where I made my boo-boo. Nice. All right, the best part. We're going to be working on the inside now. There's so much going on in this project, but you know, take what you want, leave what you don't. I'm going to unwind it and then I just wrapped it around my hand several times so that I had a bigger area here, but you can have yours pulled completely apart if you want. You're going to take some type of mounting tape. This did come from the Dollar Tree. If you have one of these little cork ones like I have, they're perfect because they fit right in the neck above, you know, the neck of the gourd. We're going to call it our gourd. They fit right up in here and you can hide them and you can still turn your lights on and off. Perfect. You can order those from Dollar Tree, I mean, uh, goodness, from Amazon, but you may be able to find something similar enough at Dollar Tree. I don't know, you'll have to check and see. You could always use a flameless tea light in here if you wanted. I'm gonna add some of the same colored leaves that we used on the top up there and the bottom off to the side a bit. And this is gonna be where we're gonna nest down our mushroom. I hope you can get an idea. I hope I'm explaining it well enough because I know it's hard to see the darkness inside of that pumpkin. So then you want to place your mushroom toward the center back of the pumpkin. I actually sat mine down a little bit too close to the front, but that's okay. You know, I can still see it nicely and it looks like a little starry night in there. Isn't it cute? I'm going to turn off the lights in just a second to show you. My son is helping me. And he's got the lights off for me so you can see how it looks. I think it's really cute. So now we're going to seal in and make that, all of those little appliques that we put on, or these little pieces here that we put on, we want to make them blend in and look a little bit richer. And the Mod Podge that we use for the rest of this project is going to be perfect to do that. It does bring out the richness of these little um, rub-on transfers, and it's going to help seal them in place so they almost look like they were hand-painted. And I like that idea. And we're going to do that to each one. It's going to blend in and dry and look so nice. And then if you want to cover up the back and you don't want that showing, you just add a leaf right there. Now it's all covered up. Nice. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of these unique, budget-friendly DIYs, hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye!